It's a wonderful afternoon, the sun is shining, and this is a lovely city. If you ever get a chance to visit Norway, I can really recommend Bergen. The coastline is exceptionally beautiful. They've hosted this World Athletics Continental Tour silver event for a few years, and I also did the European Team Championships here back in, I think it was 2010. So my name's Hannah England. I'm delighted to be here commentating for European Athletics. Hopefully you're joining us on the European Athletics YouTube channel, which has seen a massive increase in action over the past 12 months. We, t we brought you around. We've got about 18 planned in the World Athletics Outdoor Continental Tour with some of the silver and bronze meetings that are spread out across Europe this summer. The aim is to help raise the profile of these meets and make them even more accessible for our fans that love to watch live athletics at any chance they've got. And uh, you might be enjoying some of the other European athletics televised events today. We've got the European 10K Cup in Passé, France going on. I think those races get underway very soon. So maybe you'll get yourselves two screens if you're an endurance fan as well. But it's a very busy summer for European athletics. We said we've got those 10k cup races happening this evening. Next stop will be the European Team Championships. They take place in Silesia, Poland between the 20th and the 25th of June. It's a brand new format in the European Team Cup where we'll have every division running all week, starting with Division 3 and Division 2 in the midweek and moving on to Division 1 as we get towards the weekend. Next up on the European Athletics calendar is the Under-23 Championships. They'll take place between the 13th and 16th of July in Espo, Finland. And then we'll have the European Under-20 Championships in Jerusalem. They take place between the 7th and the 11th of August. So plenty of action to get your teeth stuck into. And just keep your eyes peeled on the European Athletics page for these one-day meetings. If you haven't done so already, make sure you make yourself a profile on the European Athletics page. That's really the best way to keep across the live events and all the live streaming that we'll have available this summer. If you want to keep an eye on results today from the Trondemoen Games, make sure you go to the European Athletics website. There's a tab on there. Hopefully that's how you found this stream anyway but there'll be a tab on there that will help you keep up to date with the results as well. That looks like that could be the women's hammer field being introduced to the crowd here today in Bergen. Really strong men's and women's hammer fields. The men's hammer, that's due to get underway at five to eight local time. So we've got a bit of time to wait for that. We've got the women down here. I think that's, that's Greta Olberg, I think, rather than Katrin Jacobson. Just running through the full lineup. I've got Greta Olberg, who's ninth at the World Championships. Katrin Jacobson of Denmark, a national record holder. This is Gillian Weir of Canada. She was fifth at the World Championships, third at the Commonwealth Games. Current world lead and reigning world champion is next up, Brooke Anderson wearing that special black and gold Nike World Champion kit. They get their very own special kit competing if they are World Champion. They don't have to go around looking the same as everyone else for the season. She's the only woman over 80 metres this season. 80 metres, 17 centimetres for Brooke Anderson back on the 20th of May. She is in good form. This is her first competition outside of the United States. Shrika Goratz of Hungary. We'll be up next. So second American in the field, Elisa Wilson. Second at the World Junior Championships in 2018. There's Greta Olberg. I had her at the wrong end of my list. Apologies. Just a reminder, brilliant personal best of 70.87 for Olberg to qualify for that World Championship final. So they'll get their six rounds underway. It's a nice condensed feel, but like I said, very high quality. Looking to Brooke Anderson, That's the athlete that's thrown significantly further than everyone else this season and on personal best, but a really op good opportunity for many of these athletes alongside her. I will be trying to bring you up to date with that action as it happens, but if you are particularly a Hammer fan, be sure to head for that live results tab and you'll be able to keep an eye on the women yourself as well. 
just giving ourselves set up for the track action. A jam-packed schedule down here with track and field action. A couple of endurance races to start off. Men's 800, women's 1500. Got a really good men's pole vault coming up as well. Uh, getting underway with Paul Haugen, Lily Fosser, who was the equal national record holder for Norway, but he's just lost that. So could he be trying to go high here this evening in Bergen? Move on to 100 metre hurdles for women, 100 metres for men. They've had their heats already. Have a long jump for men, 200 metre for women, 800 metre for women, hammer for men. And then we'll have a couple of 300 metre races tonight for men and women, slightly unusual distance. It'll be a men's 3,000 metre steeplechase, a para 100 towards the end of the programme. And we're going to finish this evening's action with a 3,000 metres for men. 8.45 in local time. That men's 800 due off in around about five minutes, so hopefully we can catch a full round of the discus. Let's see the presentation for the women's high jump. <laughs> I think uh, the athlete there's realised she's in the wrong place. It's Chemachenko of the Ukraine who took the win in 1 metre 86. Second place went to Heta Turi of the Ukraine, 1 metre 78. Emily Whelan of Australia was third in 1 metre 78 as well. Again, line. There will be prize money up for grabs here in Bergen, but also all important world athletics ranking points. Of course, there are two ways to get yourself into the World Championships in Budapest that take place in the last two weeks of August. You can run a qualifying time or you can accumulate enough points on the circuit to get yourself an invitation as well. So for some events where you might need absolutely perfect conditions or whether that qualifying mark is just slightly beyond your capabilities in this 2023 season, the alternative is to come and, and place yourself highly in these races. We've seen a 68.43 from Katrin Jakobsen of Denmark. And this is Suva Koskinen of Finland with her opening attempt. She's got a new personal best this season, 70 metres 41. That's the mark there, 68.43 for Katrin Jakobsen of Denmark. Not too far off her season's best, 71.08. Just waiting for the mark for Koskinen. Koskinen given 63 metres 84 and Gillian Weir of Canada up next to throw. Just one competition for Weir so far, 65 metres 7 centimetres. And could she have bettered her season's best with a very first effort? Maybe that might just be a touch below 65 metres for Gillian Weir. Fantastic summer for Weir. That fifth at the World Championships, a bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. A great domestic competition as well with Cameron Rogers. <coughs> Doing very well. So Brooke Anderson, a world lead, world champion, is up next to throw. But we did just hear the whistle for the men's 800. Let's see if we have time to catch this throw from Brooke Anderson. Gillian Weir opening round 64.89. The measurement for her. Anderson looking like she could have got her first throw over 75 metres there. Give her a lead around about seven, seven metres or so already. Time to turn our attention to the men's 800 metres. Good field down there. Yezanovic of Bosnia and Herzegovina is a semi finalist 
Things in one of the other lanes on the inside. That's uh, Zan Rudolph and Philip Schneider sharing lane eight. It's all Jakob Solibu of Norway. He goes on his own in lane seven, as is the right of the home athlete. And Joseph Dane wasn't on my initial start list. Great to see the talented Australian here. Good cohort of Australians down to race today. Tobias Gronstad of Norway goes next. In lane five, Jamie Webb in lane four, two-time medalist at the European Indoor Championships in 2019 and 21. This is Jai Perrett of Australia. He was fifth at the Australian Championships. Again, these athletes, and they compete over the domestic season in Australia, and they come out here to cut their teeth on the European circuit. It's such an experience for them. Luna Sveen and Zinezovic of Bosnia and Herzegovina will share lane two. The semi-finalists at a European level. And this is the final athlete in the lineup going in lane one, Eston Howen of Norway. Jamie Webb's got the fastest personal best, 144.1. Joseph Deng, any other athlete in the 144s. So if the Australian has travelled well, him and Jamie Webb should have a good competition here. Fastest on season's best goes to Tobias Gronstad of Norway. The athletes break from their lanes. It is a very big, busy field down there. Quite a lot of athletes. Rudolph perhaps being classed with the pacemaking duties, unofficially or officially, he's the man at the front. Joseph Deng right on his shoulder. Zan Rudolph of Slovenia for me, from his body language here and looking over his shoulder, I think he might be our pacemaker tonight. Here's a Novich of Bosnia and Herzegovina in second place behind Joseph Deng at the moment. Jamie Webb just behind. They take the bell 51 21. That's a very nice opening lap. The athletes just stretching away with 300 metres to go. Sam Rudolph just stepping aside and he drops off Joseph Deng. Stride up, down the back straight 200 meters to go, well under 120 through 800 meters to 600 meters. We could be on for a very nice 800 meter time. So, apologies, it's Schneider, Philip Schneider of the Czech Republic, is the athlete in second place at the moment. Ronsted of Norway trying to make moves into the home straight. Joseph Denk seeing if we can find a tiny bit more in the home straight, but it could be a home victory here for Tobias Gronsted. He's already set a new. 600 meter personal best and an 800 meter personal best in the last two weeks and that was a very well timed last 250 meters for the Norwegian Philip Schneider and Joseph Dane were battling each other down the home straight just left themselves a little bit vulnerable in the home straight as is the way in 800 meters but always good to see a home winner in the first track event Just coming towards the bell. It was great pacemaking from San Rudolph. Here's the battle between Philip Schneider and Joseph Deng. But by the time they'd swung into the home straight, all about Tobias Gronstad. 145.67 his new 800 meter personal best he set this season. He's going to be a little bit off that, but a really good result nonetheless. And sometimes it is about getting those wins under your belt and building momentum. So we're into round two of the women's hammer throw. Jakobsen opening this round as well. 70 metres 68 for her second round effort. That's really good. Puts her in second place behind Brooke Anderson at the moment. Brooke Anderson's opening mark was measured at 75 metres 57. So she's got nearly five metres on Jakobsen. That's a great round two effort from the Danish athlete.
Yeah, second round effort for Suva Koskinen, and we're back round to Gillian Weir. She's down in fifth place at the moment, 64-89 from the first round. European lead in the women's hammer at the moment is with Sara Fantini, 73 metres 26. So that could be a target for Kathleen Jakobsen if she can find a bit more. Gillian Weir there in the second round. We'll move that round um, to Brooke Anderson. We're also going to have a chance to catch up with the men's shot put. Ale Blingno of South Africa, her best effort. These are replays from the action that went on earlier on. Uh, Kyle Blingno of South Africa had a best throw of 20 metres, 83. The new season's best, but we're just having a look at that. That's the official results for the men's 800 metres, confirming the win for home athlete Tobias de Gronstad. That was the season's best for Joseph Deng of Australia and Philip Schneider of the Czech Republic coming in third. There's Tobias Bronsted, patiently waiting. Just the presentation of the winners here in Bergen. Starters whistle, and that's for the women's 800 metres. We'll just be getting underway on the back straight as they introduce us to the men's pole vault. Small field down there, just the five starters. You've got to feel this competition is all about that man, Hal Hagen, Lily Fosset of Norway. This field set up to uh, help him jump really high and set his outdoor season up. Cody Waters, the United States indoor jumper, 5.71, sixth of their national championships. He'll be one to watch as well. There's the women's eight, 1,500 metres set up on the back straight. High quality athletes made the trip here to Bergen. Pick out a few, you've got Sophia Thorgerson. Saw the camera go across her. She's still just 17. A silver medal at the European under 20s when she was just 15 years old. And two medals at the under 18 championships in the same day gold in the 3000, bronze in the 2000 metre steeplechase. Thorgerson, for me, is an athlete. She's never scared to lead from the front, so we could see an aggressive pace from the youngster, even though oh, she's quite a bit slower than some of the other athletes there on personal bests. She did set a new New mark of four minutes 16, winning the Nordic Senior Championships last week. But she's up against the likes of Reve Walcott Nolan, who represented Great Britain at the Olympics in Tokyo. And Nikki Hiltz having a fantastic season. New season's best 403 in Montreal on Wednesday. She's the athlete there in the white strip. First time under two minutes this season, 159.03 for the American. Doesn't look to me like there was a pacemaker if Nikki Hiltz has gone straight to the front. The Kassane Alam of Ethiopia just moving into second place, the 18 year old. Apologies, I think Alam is a little bit further back. Could be Chemitai of Uganda instead, but Nikki Hiltz at the moment for America taking up the early running 
Sarah Billings of Australia sat in third place. Reve Walcott Nolan of Great Britain and Northern Ireland just moving herself up into fourth place. 49 seconds through 300 metres. 48 seconds is four minute pace. That's a good benchmark in uh, women's 1500 metre running. Qualify mark for the World Championships this year, 403 and a half. So these women are operating at nice and close to that. Nick, Nikki Hilt's doing a great pacemaking job for the field. Let's hope they can keep this going. Nikki Hilt's has got a great sprint finish when she needs it. Sophia Thorgerson, the young Danish athlete, just bridging the gap onto the onto the lead group, trying to stick with them. Still swift through 600 metres here. Nikki Hiltz keeping these athletes around about four minutes, 4.04 pace. this time round. The race has split into two halves. All of the athletes with the faster personal bests making the cut in this lead group. That's the 800 metre mark there. 210, 211 for Nikki Hiltz. Okay, Walcott Nolan has stayed running ever so slightly wide. She's in a good position. Six hundred meters to go in the women's fifteen hundred meters. I think it's Sarah Billing of Australia having a good run in third place at the moment. Just Kasane Alam Kahise was the athlete I was identifying from Ethiopia. She was eighth at the World Junior Championships in the eight hundred meters. New personal best of four oh six set last year. She is just eighteen years old. Real good go. It's sticking with Nikki Hiltz. About. It's going to be just a shade outside three minutes. Of course, that fantastic new world record from Faith Kip Yegon last night. I'm sure these women watched and enjoyed that. Nikki Hiltz at the moment, still working hard at the front. Can they hold on? They've been so, so strong this season. I've not seen Nikki Hiltz front run so far this season, but 3.20 through 1,200 metres. They're going to do it the hard way, try and lead gun to tape. Sometimes when you turn up to a race and you don't see a pacemaker, uh, this is the only choice you've got. Vera Hoffman of Luxembourg moving herself into, the se into second place. She was eighth at the European Indoor Championships this season. She could be a danger to Nikki Hiltz. Fascinating. Kahise of Ethiopia is gathering as well. Has Nikki Hilt's got anything left in the last 100, 100 metres? Nikki Hilt's looking full of running, very, very strong. A gun to take victory in a 1500 metres. That is very, very hard to do, and it's a respectable time as well. 407.1 for Nikki Hilt's. They look delighted. Job done. Second race over in Europe. It's great to see the Americans over here racing. We've got the US Championships ever so slightly later this season. And it does mean we've managed to get a few more of the United States stars over here to compete on the European circuit. Nikki Hiltz will be looking to get in those top three positions at the US Championships and secure a spot for Budapest. And sometimes coming here and doing these tactical races like this can hone those skills. Strong finish in the end from Kasane Alam Kahisi of Ethiopia. Looked like she might be going backwards just at the start of that bell lap. Bell lap that just managed to rally in the last 200 metres. But nobody could get back on turns with Nikki Hiltz. The win goes to the United States. moment to catch up with the women's hammer. Rika Goodatz of Hungary, two fouls in the first and the second round. Let's see if she can get a valid throw here in the third. Amen. 
64 metres, 6 centimetres for good acts. But most importantly, a valid throw after two fouls. So hopefully she can relax now. She's got, got a mark to her name. Confirmed results of the women's 1500. A win for the United States and Nikki Hiltz, 407.1. Vera Hoffman of Luxembourg in second, 408.03. Marissa Damink of the Netherlands finishing well for third, 408.41. Top five athletes all underneath 410. Thanks largely to the pacemaking duties from Nikki Hiltz. We're taking a look back at some of the women's high jump this competition has completed. Australia, perhaps. I'm going to replay in the top three. Emily Whelan was 1 metre 78. Heta Turby of the Ukraine, 1 metre 78 as well on countback. There's Chimachenko of the Ukraine, one of the lesser known Ukrainians, but nonetheless finishing where we expect Ukrainian high jumpers to on the top of the podium. Her best mark of the day, 1 metre 86. Took her three attempts to get over that. Sixty-four, seventy-three. That's the third round measurement for Greta Alberg of Sweden. It completes round three of the women's hammer. And now reverse the order, throw from seventh to first, first position. So we've got good acts of Hungary will get proceedings underway in the fourth round. Gillian Weir of Canada in sixth at the moment. That will be Greta Alberg, Suva Koskinen, Lisa Wilson, Katrin Jakobsen and Brooke Anderson, world champion in the lead at the moment. Nikki Hiltz preparing themselves for the singular presentation in part of these events. He said, just the winner. Nice and simple. Busy few days for Nikki Hiltz. 403 in Montreal in France in a second place on Wednesday. In Bergen, I said it's a beautiful place in Norway. It's not particularly easy to get to. So I think uh, Nikki Hiltz has probably been travelling quite continuously since Wednesday to get from France to Bergen. And they're rewarded with a win. Roman Koshko of the Ukraine. Getting his replay here. His best effort, 20 metres 98, came in the second round, but that was enough to take the win. And we talked about Faith Kip Yegon's brilliant world record in the women's 1500. What about that 23 and a half metre throw from Ryan Krauser? That was brilliant in the men's shot. But here goes Brooke Anderson, the current event leader, current world champion, and the world lead. That's, uh, she did have a foul in the third round. It's going to be a replay. I think that's a replay of her 75 57 at her best round at the moment. We cut good acts of Hungary opening up round four in the women's hammer.
just underneath the 65 meter mark there for Greta Gurantz. Could be around about the same as her third round effort, 64 meters, six centimeters. We'll have a look. Canadian athlete Gillian Weir. Let's take a moment, do some visualizations. 64 48 for that set. Gillian Weir, she's already thrown a season's best 66 metres 16. She's a 73 metre thrower at her best. Planning just past the 65 metre line. Sixty-five, forty-five for Gillian Weir. No improvement on her second round effort of sixty-six metres sixteen. Go to Alberg of Sweden up next. She was delighted to make that final in Eugene. To perform with a personal best and qualification, really impressive under that pressure. Wound up ninth place in that global final. Just only 68 metres this season. Don't think that fourth round effort is going to improve on her 66 metres, 63. So those Hammer women halfway through round four. Head over for the women's 100 metre hurdles. Andrea Ruth of Norway, good lane draw in lane four. Again, as you would expect for a home athlete, I've got no problem with that. If you put on these events, you deserve to put your athletes way, where you want them. Ruth's got a good personal best of 13.1, quite a bit off that this season though, 13.6. We'll go through the full lineup. Lisa Anderson of Norway, new personal best this season, 1367. Another Norwegian athlete in lane two, Honevik, 13.7 this season. Mathild Helpback of Denmark goes in lane three. Andrea Ruth, third of four Norwegians in this field and the fastest of the Norwegians, 13.1. Norilotta Nisri, a personal best of 12.81, four-time European indoor finalist for Finland. Nicola Mazzetti of Italy goes in lane seven. Alea Bock of Norway. She's in lane eight. And I was expecting Hannah Jones of Australia. It might be a no start for the Australian, which is a shame. Nicola Mazzetti of Italy, the athlete in lane seven, has got the fastest personal best, 13.02. Naziri of Finland with her 13.04. With the withdrawal of Hannah Jones, that leaves 
Naziri as the fastest athlete this season. Good finishing speed there for Naziri. Hugs all round. And I think that will be a win for Nora Lotta Naziri of Finland. Good speed into the first hurdle there for Naziri. A little bit off balance perhaps for that second one, but it certainly didn't seem to affect her overall speed. The battle with Alea Bock outside of her. Naziri of Finland has been awarded 13.17, but we'll get up to date with the official results as they come through. Just for any people that are interested in sprints out there, and the wind reading of minus 0.3. Really good conditions here in Bergen for sprinting. Jakobsen with her fourth round effort, her best throw at the moment from round two, 70 metres, 68 this woman by five metres or so. Brooke Anderson, you can see that extra speed she's got in the circle. You have to be able to control that speed, but you really can see why Brooke Anderson can get the hammer further than the rest of the athletes in this field at the moment. So series so far, pretty consistent, 75 and a 74. I said she has got the world lead at the moment, 80 metres, 17. Kathleen Jakobsen is actually a foul in round four. Not have a mark for Brooke Anderson yet in that fourth round. Keep up to date with the men's discus as well. That went on earlier on today. Sven Skagelstad of Norway. Best mark of 59.14. This is Robert Urbanek of Poland. Came in with a Season's best of 64 metres, managed 62.71, his best effort coming in his final round. Zerbi uh, here taking her winner's check. I imagine it's a big novelty check. And then you can take home with you. Sam Mattis of the United States finished in second place in the men's discus, 62 metres, 82 in the final round. Many of these men producing their best effort in the final round, just building momentum. Goodnesson of Iceland was the winner overall, 63 metres, 83 coming in his final round effort, gave him the win by one metre, one centimetre over Sam Mattis. Very jazzy shirt for Goodnesson as well. If you turn up wearing a pink shirt like that, you've probably got to take the win. Good 
Greta Alberg in round five here in the Women's Hammer. Brooke Anderson has measured at 73 metres, eight for her fourth round effort. We've had a foul from Greta Goretz. Gillian Weir, not sure if she's uh, passed as they mark for her. It might not quite be measured yet. Greta Alberg is throwing third in round five. No mark yet for Greta Alberg. See what Koskinen will throw next. Koskinen in fourth place at the moment. 75 centimetres or so behind Alicia Wilson, both 68, 69 metres. That looks short of 65, so that won't be an improvement for Suva Koskinen. So often as this competition goes on, the athletes, they might get tired, they might get tense, they're trying to force out a further throw, and it doesn't always happen. Gillian Weir, just to mark your card, 65 40 for her in the fifth round. That wasn't an improvement. And it was a foul for Greta Alberg, it might have been an intentional one. And she saw the hammer fall down the short side of 65 metres. Koskinen there measured at 64 metres or so, so that won't improve. Into the top three, Alicia Wilson of the United States, sitting in third at the moment. I haven't seen too much of her. She was second at the NCA's last year in the discus, 74 metres, 78. The NCA's been the American Collegiate Championships, very, very competitive. So let's pick up a second. second there. Very impressive. That's getting up towards the 70 metre mark. At 69, 24, her best mark in round two. Kathleen Jakobsen up next for Denmark. Good series there, 68-43, And then a foul in the fourth round. Good speed there from Jakobsen as well. Where's it going to land? Another solid throw there. Up towards 70 metres for the Danish woman. To conclude round five in the women's hammer throw, Brooke Anderson making her way into the circle. 63-93 for Jakobsen. Significantly over the 75 metre line for Brooke Anderson, that could, could improve her 75 57 from the opening round.
So the next track action we've got coming up is the men's 100 meter final. That's in about three minutes or so. We've got a men's pole vault going on on the infield. The men's long jump will be getting underway in around about five minutes as well. Seventy-six metres, eight centimetres, Brooke Anderson, her furthest throw in the penultimate round. So just seven throws left to go in the women's hammer. It's time for the men's 100 metre final. They had some heats earlier on. Heat one won by Adam Thomas of Great Britain, 10.3. Tobias Larsen of Denmark, 10.49. Yeah, plus 1.8 wins a little bit earlier on. I think it will be kinder now. Karl Nazarov of Estonia won the second heat in 10.49 from Jakob Vola of Norway. There's the full line-up down there. We've got no start from Pierre Tinius Voldren of Norway. That's Norwegian Jakob Vola will be in lane two. Nazarov in lane five. There he is, Jakob Vola of Norway. Season's best, 10.47. Just 100 outside of his personal best, 10.46. Tobias Larsen of Denmark will go in lane three. 10.42, his best mark this season. Adam Thomas of Great Britain goes in lane four. Fifth at the World Indoor Championships in Belgrade 2022. That heat win earlier on was his first race of the outdoor season. And Carl Nazarov of Estonia goes in lane five. He was fourth, one place ahead of Adam Thomas in Belgrade in that 60 metres back in March 2022. Corbin Gunnarsson of Iceland will go in lane six. Frederick Schu Nielsen of Denmark goes in lane seven. Matthias Hoover Johansson of Norway completes the lineup in lane eight. Adam Thomas has got the fastest personal best, 10.18. But Carl Nazarov in that fourth place at the World Indoor Championships, national indoor record holder for Estonia. I feel there's a tiny bit more there for the Estonian over this 100 metres. It could be dangerous for the, for the athlete from Great Britain. Good start from the 60 metre specialists, as you'd expect. Adam Thomas did perhaps get the better start, but here, here comes Karl Nazarov of Estonia. Nazarov finally opens up some daylight there in the final 10 metres, but he needed every inch of the track to get himself for sure ahead of Adam Thomas. 10.35 on the screen. That would be just outside Nazarov's personal best of 10.34. Come back to the official result for that men's 100 as soon as they sorted it out. It was one for Nazarov of Estonia and of Thomas of Great Britain. The men's long jump field. Flatness of Norway being introduced first. Tardis Teng Toglu has the best European mark this season. He's gone out to 8.26. Yeah, 
Allen and Rucker of Australia. I did say there were a few good Australians here. He was second at the national championships. He might be on his uh, first European season. Jack Roach down there as well for Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Daniel Igni of Iceland. Erwan Kanate, world junior champion, not once but twice, took the gold medal in Nairobi in 2021 and in Cali last summer in Colombia. So we could be looking to see Konete at the European Under-23 Championships in Espo, Finland. He's already done well as a senior, seventh at the European Indoor Championships. So he'd have every right to set his sights just on Budapest. That men's long jump competition will get underway. Field still very busy. That men's pole vault going on. This uh, women's hammer throw just coming to a conclusion. Alicia Wilson has just had her final round effort. Gillian Weir has managed to improve in this sixth and final round, 67-23, to push herself up to fifth place. Alicia Wilson, 68-26 for her final round effort. She stays in third. So it's down to Kathleen... Jakobsen and Brooke Anderson. Jakobsen at the moment, 70 metres 68. So 40 centimetres under her season's best. She's got one chance left to extend that season's best for this season. I think she's just walked out the front there. So don't worry, guys, don't waste your time measuring that. But again, Good, solid series for the Danish athlete. Her best stays at 70 metres 68 from round two. Such a strong summer for the American women in the heavy throws last season. Cara Winger in the javelin, Chase Ely winning the shot put, Brooke Anderson winning the hammer. And that was her final effort. She's walked out the back, so that does imply that Brooke Anderson thinks that could be good. Five meters 44 for Brooke Anderson. Her best stays at 76 and 8 centimeters, but a good solid series off the American as she starts what will hopefully be a few meets over here in Europe. the confirmed results. Win for the United States and Brooke Anderson. Second for Denmark, Kathleen Jakobsen. Third to the United States as well with Alicia Wilson. Alec Nazarov of Estonia. New season's best for the Estonian. Just outside his personal best. Confirmed results there. Like I said, a kind of wind as we've got through the day. Minus 0.7 here in Bergen. Nazaroff, 10.34, ahead of Thomas of Great Britain, 10.42. And, uh, Early days in the men's long jump. Lead at the moment, 7 metres 60 with Henrik Flatnes. A 
and Yarlin Rooker. Or perhaps if it's Australian, it might be Jarlin Rooker. Second at their national championships in February. Jack Roach of Great Britain's up next. Foul jump for Jack Roach there. 7 metres 24 the mark for Rooker. Pushing him up into second place early stages of the men's long jump. Daniel Inge of Iceland. Some people, it's all been a bit too much. <laughs> Someone there uh, having a little snooze. Perhaps they've been here all day. And lots of action on with some age group races. I uh, win Canate of France is up next. And the final athlete to jump. Ugh. Didn't quite hit his mark. They did get the white flag, but he wasn't confident in his takeoff there. brings us round to the women's 200 metres. Rashida Adelaki of Ireland's got the fastest mark in Europe so far this year, 22.34. Fantastic mark over in the NCA season. Do you like that? We've got all eight women down there lining up. Inka Bavet of Belgium will go in lane eight. His sixth in Nairobi in the Continental Tour Gold in her season's best, 23.31. This is Tori Lewis of Australia. She's just 18. This is Christine Belland Jensen of Norway in lane six. Leoni van Vliet. National champion from Holland goes in lane five. Lane four is Malin Amundsen of Norway. Lane three, Kubjorg Bjarne Dottier of Iceland. Lane two, Kertesi Ertzgaard of Norway. And the final athlete in lane one is Marta Pettersson, also of Norway. Tori Lewis, the fastest athlete in the field, 23-02, new personal best set winning surprise second gold medal at the Australian Championships. She said she went in having high hopes for the 100, managed to pull off the win and then a surprise double gold for the 18-year-old against the senior competition. And she said she's not sure what her event is now, she just takes it day by day here in the 200 in Bergen. Good start for Tori Lewis. Already making up ground on Vivette of Belgium. Tori Lewis streaking away with this. 
Jensen of Norway, perhaps Vliet of the Netherlands, trying to get back on terms with the Australian. The Australian could be vulnerable here in the last 50 metres, but she's finding a tiny bit more. Tori Lewis of Australia in her first European season, 23-24. That's a great start. All new experiences for the youngster. We'll have a look back at the race. It was a good start from Tori Lewis. She only had Imke Vivert to aim at. And then she was out there on her own. I wonder if she sensed Jensen and Vliet inside of her. And they were certainly battling each other. Tori Lewis just found a little bit more in the last 40 metres. Managing to keep herself ahead of the Norwegian inside of her. Jalen Rooker of Australia. wonder if he's just seen his teammate take the win. He probably has. He's in third place at the moment. Seven metres, 24 in the second round of the long jump. That good on the board for Rooker. Gets the white flag. Here's the confirmed results of the women's 200 metres. Tori Lewis, 23-23. Christine Valian Jensen of Norway, 23-37. Leonie van Vliet of Netherlands, 23-58. I was about to say, if this was a team championship, so it'd be going the way of... Oh, there might be a tie between Norway. No, I think it's going to be with the United States at the moment. Nikki Hiltz and Brooke Anderson. Two wins for them. Jack Roach jumps next. I haven't got Mark for Rooker yet. That's not been entered into the system. Just to remind you, if you want to follow on... Uh, follow along with results here from Bergen. The Tron Moan Games, you can do so via the European Athletics website. You have to make yourself a profile, but that's not a bad thing. That would be very, very useful all summer long if you want to keep up with our one-day series. European Athletics doing their best to broadcast so many of the World Athletics silver and bronze continental tour meetings that take place in our continent. got 18 planned. Yeah. Brooke Anderson climbing to the top of the podium after her win in the women's hammer. Next, in, next meeting coming up on the European Athletics YouTube is Horse Out tomorrow. That's a very competitive field. It's always fast times, far distances coming out of Horse Out. A double hitter on Wednesday. Two events, one from Finland and one from Denmark. So clear your Wednesday night, get yourself two computers and tune into them. Here's a full result of the women's hammer. Brooke Anderson, 76 metres and 8 centimetres for the win. Tori Lewis stepping up to the number one spot. It's a new personal best for Christine Bellion Jensen of Norway in second place with her 23-37. Tori Lewis taking the win in the end at 23-23. The 
Tony Van Vliet of the Netherlands, 23.58. Just take a moment to catch up with the men's pole vault. Carl Halgen, Lily Fosser, entered at 5.42, indicating on the graphic. And he got a first time clearance. This is Elwan Konate, 5.50 in the first round. It wasn't quite a foul, but it might as well have been. And that was a foul, red flag for the Frenchman. He jumped five metres and 50, basically running into the pit, not jumping capable of something quite nice this evening for the Frenchman who found the board, find his rhythm. Henrik Flatners of Norway will start round three. He's in first place at the moment, seven metres sixty. That was his opening effort. Personal best of 7.95, really close to that eight metre mark. Let's see, red flag for the Norwegian. Dramatic timing from the official there. You do have to wait till the athlete exits the pit. We're just waiting. Was it going to be white? Or was it going to be red? Henrik Flatner's still in the lead at the moment as he's opened up round three of the long jump. I think this could be Philip Pravdisa of Croatia. I think he's meant to jump next. He's in third place at the moment, 7 metres 52. I think he's predominantly a decathlete. Certainly competes very often in the decathlon. He's here testing himself over one discipline. He's won over 8 metres this season, 8 metres 1 centimetre just off his personal best. Only 7.52 so far. Can the Croatian manage here in the third round? He gets the white flag. So the women's 800 just getting them, themselves ready for their start. It's not too off for another five minutes or so. They've got plenty of time out on the track. They're doing their strides, which is nice to see. There is an indoor warm-up area here in Bergen. Used quite a lot for their winter sports. It's just behind where the hammer cage is. It's probably done a few drills and strides in there. Get to come out on the track and do a little bit more. So this is perhaps a Kiplersund of Norway. It's a new personal best this season, 8 metres 21. Very respectable, but two fouls here so far in Bergen. And I think that was about to be a third foul there for perhaps a Kiplersund.
Apparently, Jan Athi getting some coaching advice on the side. Luckily, there's only seven athletes in this field, so everybody will get six jumps. And to Jan and Rooker of Australia. Second place at the moment, 7.57. Three centimetres off the lead of Flatness of Norway. Australian gets the white flag. That looked like a nice jump. So it was six forty eight for Pravdicia of Croatia, so no improvement for him. He's in third place. This man, Jack Roach has jumped exactly the same, 7.52. So to move from fourth to third, Jack Roach just needs to beat have this year's second best mark of 6.48. I say just, for the moment. We're only around three here in the men's long jump. Jack Roach a foul and then 7.52. Scoreboard there just updating us on the uh, 767. That was a mark for Jalen Rooker. That puts him um, in the lead ahead of Flatness. I did unfortunately miss that jump from Jack Roach. I'll well, keep my eyes peeled for, for a mark. And maybe we're going to get it live on the screen. Seven. 40. That would be enough for Jack Roach to go up into third place. That's better than Philip Pravdicia's second best effort. It's time for the 800 metre women. Hedda Heiner, the local Norwegian athlete, getting the attention from the camera crew. Big field down there, lots of athletes. It's been asked for a pace of 59.5, which is a very sensible pace, but with a high quality big field, it, it might need spreading out a little bit more than that. Nora World of Norway will do the pacemaking. Lavisa Lind will share lane eight. This is her first race of 2023. She's got the fastest person verse one, 58, a mark for Lavisa Lind. Matja Kohlberg, semi final European Championships and World Championships last summer. Edda Heiner waving to the crowd, national record holder for Norway. So Ellie Sanford of Australia, she was second at their national championships. Marion Nifors and Bianca Kerry will share lane four. All the way down to two dead, 29 Bianca Kerry last summer. This is Marion Holstein of Norway, all on her own in lane three. Rachel Pelland of Switzerland and Jenny Salmon will share lane two. Rachel Pelland won 27 600 a few weeks ago. And Amory Nissen of Denmark goes in lane one. A successful move so far from four hurdles to 800. Two dead, 58 for Nissen last season. The inform athlete, perhaps Ellie Sanford, with her two dead, 0.5. In a lot of travel for the Australian. Hedda Heiner, Lavisa Lind, 158 performers. Matcha Kohlberg, a youngster that's still getting better with every race. Very intriguing women's 800 metres here in Bergen. A strong finish from Tobias Gronsted of Norway to take the win in the men's event. And he goes Vold to the front. Sanford of Australia in second at the moment. Matcha Kohlberg settling in to third. 
Bianca Kerry, Rachel Pelland, and the next to each other on the start line. Running side by side here as well. Bianca Kerry just trying to ease herself up a little bit closer to the action. We're hoping to get 500 metres or so out of Vold, the pacemaker. Very well done through 400 metres, just 0.4 slower than was asked for. Vold will just be trying to empty the tank now. It could leave Ellie Sanford a little bit vulnerable here to be shot at through 500 metres. Ellie Sanford takes up the running. Matcha Kohlberg of Germany still in second place at the moment. Bianca Kerry of Hungary into third. There goes Rachel Pelland of Switzerland. And Marie Neeson, this is very impressive from an athlete that's only been running 800 metres for a few seasons, but suddenly the top three just starting to move away. Here goes Matcha Kohlberg. She bided her time, she a decent season opener in Ray Lingen on Sunday. And it could be a win here for Matcha Kohlberg. Strong finish from Rachel Pelland of Switzerland. Get second place, Matcha Kohlberg. Is she aware of Pelland? Oh, if she was, there was nothing she could do about it. Rachel Pelland, a fantastic finish from the Swiss athlete. Just mix it on the line. 202.61, she was caught up in traffic a little bit in the bell, Rachel Pelland. Uh, came good over the last 50 metres there and running all the way to the line. Thomas Mardell of Norway will be our first thrower in the men's hammer. That was Ben Hallers, I was going to say, that looked like Ben Hallers. Perhaps Thomas Mardell has already gone through the camera. Ben Hallers of Hungary, next to be introduced. Umar Orn Jonsson of Iceland will be throwing third. Ragnar Carlsson of Sweden throwing fourth. Lots of these men have got very good personal bests, up over 77 metres or so. Mm -hmm. Season's best could be up for a bit of a rewrite today. Christos Frangasakis of Greece is the penultimate athlete to be introduced. And saving the crowd favourite, the local guy for last, this is Ivan Henriksen. Silver medal in Tokyo. Third in Eugene, Eugene behind Pavel Fidek and Wojciech Nowitzki. And just fifth in LA on Saturday, Henriksen, in the season opener. She'll be hoping for a bit more in front of this home crowd. That European lead is with Wojciech Nowitzki, 79-78. That's vulnerable if you look at everybody's personal bests. It's got to be said on, on season's best. Bence Hallas of Hungary is the best. It's 76-77. Let's see if they can find their groove down there in the circle. the official result of the women's 800 metres. Rachel Pelland by seven hundredths in the closing few metres, uh, taking the win for Switzerland. Magic Kohlberg of Germany happened to settle for second. Oh good, Thomas Mardell is there. He just missed the lineup, maybe getting ready to get his opening effort. Getting himself prepared. 74, 73, here's season's best. Got around about an hour of action left here in Bergen for you. About halfway through the men's long jump. And there is a men's pole vault going on down there. And the bar at the moment still at 5.62. I think it's all about Pal Haugen. Lily Foster already. He's jumping on his own. 
So 76 metres, 36 to start the men's hammer. That's not bad at all from Thomas Mardell. Fantastic start there. New season's best. And it's uh, not far off his personal best at all. Vince Halas of Hungary will be up next. Good number of major championship medals for Halas. Bronze in the 2019 World Championships. Bronze in the European Championships in 2018. And then a silver this year. In Munich. Good summer for Halas. Sixth in Eugene, second in Munich. But... Being from Hungary, I'm sure he would like far more when we head to Budapest. Foul in the opening round here in Bergen. Our next track race, we'll be getting underway. I think we'll have a couple more efforts here in the hammer. It'll be the 300 metres for men. It's a slightly unusual distance. Hilmar Orl on Jonsson of Iceland. Just over 70 metres. He's got a season's best of 74.11. And it's been given a foul, in fact, for Janssen. <laughs> Henrik Flatness of Norway. His fourth time effort. He did have the lead. And it's been taken away. That was a nice jump though. Try and bring you a measurement on that if I see it. Just a reminder, if you go to the European Athletics website, you can look at all these live results yourself as well. And there's the scorecards for all the field events and the official results for the track times. We're going to head over for the men's 300 metres. Wonderful to see all these, what I assume are local sponsors for each of the events, such as the way at the moment. Lots of meeting organisers seem to get different local businesses to sponsor each event rather than trying to shoot for that one headline sponsor for the whole meeting. But it's great to see support for athletics. Let's see, it's that men's 300 metre field down there. Lane 8 will be Gustav Nielsen, who win in Belgrade at one of the indoor meetings we televised over the indoor season. Andreas Grimerud of Norway goes in seventh. Gardia Isaacs of South Africa goes in lane six. Havad Ingoldson of Norway goes in lane five. Benjamin Lobo of Denmark fourth at the World Indoor Championships 18 months ago. Bastia Ustad, 18-year-old from Norway, goes in lane three. Mihai Sodin Jingo was second to Gustav Nielsen in uh, Belgrade in that indoor meeting. First athlete we met earlier on. There's Andreas Beckton of Norway, who will go in lane one. So, Gardio Isaacs of South Africa in lane six, the only athlete to have run 300 metres this season already. 32 35 for him. Good results over 400 as well. New personal best 45 15. Third at the National Champs in South Africa. Seventh at the Botswana Continental Tour Gold. So with that resume, I'm tempted to say keep your eye on Lane 7 and Isaacs. That could be doing a disservice to some of the fantastic athletes we've got down there. To mention 18-year-old Erstad of Norway. He's in Lane 3. Coming under pressure from Dringo inside of him. But at the moment, is it Isaacs of South Africa as they enter the home straights? No, it looks like 
could be the athlete in lane two, Mihai Sonnen Dringo of Romania. But Isaacs does come good in the last 40 metres in the end, using all that experience from 300 metres. It's a weird distance, it's an odd one. I think these, many of these guys are 400 metre specialists and they might expect to just measure their effort a tiny little bit. Maybe that finish line coming up sooner than they, they realise and they're still full of running. But Bacardeo, Isaacs of South Africa. Let's have a look back. It was a good start from Isaacs. I did think as they open and to the home straight, it could have been a slight lead for Dringo of Romania, but it might have been the stagger unwinding. Isaacs coming good in the end. And Valdson of Norway battling well for second. He's the European under 20 bronze medalist from a few years ago. In Valdson. necessarily surprising to see him pushing the winner all the way to the line. <laughs> Rachel Pelland of Switzerland taking her spot on top of the podium. Talk about well-timed sprint finishes. I thought Tobias, Tobias Gronsted in the men's 800 metres was most impressive, but Rachel Pelland, 700, her margin of victory. And that is why coaches, when they work with young athletes, say you've got to always run through the line. You never know. And it might be hundreds making the difference in those key positions. This year of Croatia willing a better mark there. They're into the fifth round in the men's long jump. The lead at the moment still with uh, Jarlan Rucker of Australia, seven metres, 67. So they've got around about a round and a half to go in the men's long jump. So it's the beginning of round two of the men's hammer. Thomas Mardell of Norway. I can all sorts of bother that. Fantastic. 76, 36 in the first round. New season's best. Still enough for the lead at the moment. Ivan Henriksen went out to 75, 91 in his opening round effort. It must have been, uh, perhaps it was another athlete checking out their mark, because I think that was Philip Pravdicia of Croatia. Jack Roach up next. He's in third position. So the athletes are now jumping in descending order. So Pabdicia was the jump before. He went all the way up. 7.72, that mark from the Croatian. That's a new lead. Can Jack Roach be the first man to respond? So Pabdicia of Croatia now in the lead by five centimetres. And Jalen Rucker. Owen Canate of France, one of the best athletes on paper, real trouble, 550 in the first round, and then four fouls. 
so one, just one effort left for the Frenchman. It's Henrik Flatnez of Norway. Yeah, the lead for a little bit in his first round effort of 5.60. Seven thirty-nine for Jack Roach with his apologies. That's his fourth round. We've not got his fifth round on the system yet. Yes, we have seven twenty-two. So no improvement for the British athlete. So that one to Henrik Flatnes of Norway. Jonsson, perhaps of Iceland. Or was it Ragnar Carlsen? Apologies, I think it's Ragnar to Ragnar Carlsen. Sixty-nine, forty-nine is marked from the first round. Adam Kangas of Finland, our first look at him. He's in fifth place at the moment, 71 metres 60. Seventy-one twenty. that was the mark for Ragnar Carlsen, so he does improve on his opening effort. and leeches the hammer. It's a group of men just gathering themselves on the back straight ready for steeplechase. Championship qualifying mark, I think eight fifteen this year. Maybe trying to attack that. Christos Frandesakis up next. A pair of silver medals at the European Athletics Age Group Championships. Sixth in Munich, 72-68 in the first round. And Sakis, the same there. We'll tell our, turn our attention to the track for this men's steeplechase. They don't look quite ready yet. Just getting themselves ready. Ala Zuglami of Italy. One of two athletes on 8.14 for a personal best. Abraham Isiduni of Spain has done that as well, but not for a few years, 2019, for the Spanish athlete versus Zuglami managed that 8.14 in 2021, only ninth at the Olympic Games. to have a pacemaker uh, for this men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. And then pacing it at 8.20. That's outside that World Championship qualifying mark. I wonder if uh, there might be a few athletes that 
I have asked for a tiny bit faster. But sometimes it's important to move through those different paces. There's no point in trying to run 8.15 if you're only ready for 8.20. It's a long season, those World Championships all the way in the second half of August. Some five weeks or so later than we were in Eugene last summer. looking at each other this first lap they won't go to the water jump so that should make things simpler but a lot of uh, arging and barging nonetheless uh, I'll say Johansson of Denmark he's due to be the pacemaker decent athlete himself personal best of 8.30 so trying to go maybe 1500 2k at 8.20 pace should be okay for Avra Hammerson. It looks like it could be Ala Zoglami of Italy in second place. His brother has a European lead at the moment, Osama Zoglami. So, performed pretty well out in uh, Rabat for an 8.14. Uh, if uh, Osama Zoglami has the European lead, he hasn't got the European title, that's in the hands of Tupi Reitonen. I think is settling into uh, second place there behind Zoglami. The Finnish athlete had an incredible sprint on him in Munich to take that gold medal. Abrahamson of Denmark. Maybe. He's not too far ahead. He's still setting a benchmark. It's nice and still here in Bergen. We've had very low wind readings the sprint event so perhaps not a disadvantage that they're a notch behind Abrahamson in early stages here in the men's steeplechase and this is what you need to do if you want to be an international steeplechaser it's all right training at home going over barriers on your own but you've got to get into this environment in a cluster in a pack of men that all hurdle at a slight different rate so you really test yourself. This is Philip Pravdisia of Croatia with his final effort. The lead at the moment. And Philip Pravdisia, we've just seen his final effort, 772 for him in round five. Gadeo Isaac's nice, quick, efficient presentation, very similar to his 300 meter effort. around about uh, there'll be over a kilometer these men in this 3000 meter steeplechase that mark would have been around about halfway down the home straight so we've got abrahamson of denmark in there pacemaking not much change in the order here so glami the first out of the races Topi right in sitting in second place You can tell that uh, Abrahamson of Denmark is right on his limit here. You can see him stutter into the water jump, whereas the other athletes behind him and they took it in their stride. It's like Alan Zoglami may be starting to drift wide a tiny bit. I'm sensing that he might need to get ahead of the pacemaker or maybe just giving himself a, a proper look at the track. So they're underneath four minutes 
with three laps to go, four laps to go. It's very good running for these men. Should be well on for a sub 8.30 clocking here in Bergen. Maker just stepping aside as they've got round about a kilometre to go. Kilometre marks aren't where they should be. If you had a 3,000 metres without the little dip here to go into the water jump. Lovely pack there running all together. And this is the important bit now. What happens when the pacemaker steps aside? Zaglami has been very comfortable at the front. Is he going to push on at all? Topi right in and sticking to him. But to Ruiz, the athlete in third place at the moment he's having a good run he was 13th at the european championships he has got a great personal best at 816 who is hurdling well in third place for spain Class book holds of Germany up there as well. He's got a personal best listed at 831, so he's operating nicely in that region. The top three, still the same. Ala Zoglami, European champion, Topi Reitinen, Victor Ruiz of Spain. Just he's moving wide into the water jumps and then content to stick, tuck back in. So Glami leading at the moment, that does give him the advantage of a clear run at the hurdles. You can see the other men jostling and trying to get position. So this now two laps to go in the men's steeplechase, 6.15 on the clock. I'm going to have to keep it moving here if they want to get underneath 8.30. Moving past, Toppy right in. And stops just short of the lead, perhaps just jostling for better position. Pal Palkovitz of Hungary, that was the athlete that swung wide there. They didn't quite want the lead in there. Toppy right in, almost woken up by all the action that was going alongside him. Victor Ruiz responding fine. I think Zoglami should be able to cope with this as well. He had a very good 2K a few weeks ago. 8.32. Italian athlete staying wide, staying out of trouble. Toppy right in, in, European champion. He's not in the position he was in in Munich. He came from behind there with a huge sprint finish in the last 150, 180 metres or so, but he takes the belt for Finland. Toppy Wrighton in from Victor Ruiz. Very similar personal bests, both on 8.16. A well-matched race. Istvan Palkovic of Hungary. Yeah, in third, I think, at the moment. Right in and Ruiz really going. There goes Victor Ruiz. He's trying to get himself ahead and away from the European champion. Toppy Wrighton in didn't have an answer straight away. Is he going to rally? Victor Ruiz of Spain looks like he's got this one wrapped up. That was a great burst of speed into that barrier on the break back straight. He's navigated the water jump well. Heavy landing from Wrighton in. See it jarring his back. Victor Ruiz of Spain. One barrier between him and victory. Takes that supremely well, barely stuttering. Toppy right in him, having to battle here for second place. Ruiz breaking the tape, taking the win, 8.23. It's a season opener for Victor Ruiz. And that's much better than the 13th place he took in Munich. That'll be a lovely start to his outdoor steeplechase season. And that is what a 3,000 metre steeplechase does for you. Very, very tired legs down there.
Meanwhile, in the men's hammer, Yamar or Orn Jonsson of Iceland starting round four. He's yet to have a valid throw. Oh, he's hit the netting there. Frustration for Jonsson. The only advantage here is, is there aren't that many athletes in the field, so they all get their six efforts. Here goes Victor Ruiz. And that down the back straight. And this is the closing stages here for Ruiz, but he just timed his effort absolutely perfectly. That was a good run from Vidar Johansson of Sweden as well. Pushing Toppy right in all the way to the line. At your top three. Wagner Carlsen of Sweden is in seventh place at the moment. Best of 71.20 so far. But we've made our way all the way. No, that, the graphic was incorrect. That is Ragnar Carlsen. The win is with Thomas Mardell at the moment, halfway through this men's hammer. Confirmation of that win for Victor Ruiz, 823 from Toppy Wrighton in 824.77. And Vidar Johansson of Sweden, just a tiny bit behind. There you go, 24 for Johansson. Personal best for Sandvik of Norway in sixth, who we just saw getting interviewed. Alas Oglami or oh, faded there. A lot of the work in the middle of the race and just paid for it. have got a para men's 100 meters i love seeing para events integrated alongside the olympic events gives these athletes a competition opportunity a chance to perform in front of a crowd that might not have got to see, see them before it's the guard dragsund sverd of norway and he's got a season's best which is also a new personal best of 1106 skander afmani of algeria 10.29, his personal best. No season's best yet. Salem Agezi Kashafali of Norway goes in lane five. And Michael Darius of Poland in lane six. No mark down for Darius. I wonder if this could be his first 100 metres, or it might not just have made its way onto the system. There have been a few Para World Cups going on. I think there was one in, uh, I want to say it was Switzerland. There were some horrendous weather conditions for one of them. It's very nice here in, in Bergen. But the World Championships are taking place in Paris this year for the Para Athletes. So, uh, some of them will get a dry run at that Paris venue before they turn their attention to the Paralympics in the same place next year. Of course, the Para World Championships cancelled last year. Very limited competition opportunities for these athletes. Good start from Afmani there of Algeria. Afmani and Kashafali of Norway battling all the way to the line. It is the local athlete Salem Kashafali of Norway breaks the tape 10:49. I think this is his opening race of the season, from what I've got on my system. That would be a great opener. His personal best is 10:44. To be this 500 outside of that, it's very good. And Skander Afmani of Algeria is a faster on personal best. Personal best. <laughs> Pleasure Valley of Norway. Excuse me, very much enjoying himself. Oh, I hope that was a, a, a fake grab at his hamstring, <laughs> not a real grab. So, Bence Hallens 
in third place at the moment, 75 metres, 10 centimetres. Apologies, down in fifth. There's some good throwing here in the fourth round. Red flag for Ben Tallas. Makes it three fouls. It's only valid effort, 75-10. It was higher up in the standings earlier on, but only good enough for fifth at the moment. Bringing you up to date, Christos van der Stakis has improved to 75 metres. 70, that puts him in third. David Henriksen still in second. And Thomas Mardell in first. Here is Ivan Henriksen. So new season's best already, 76 metres, 9 centimetres. I think he just had that one competition over in LA last weekend. Uh, isn't that smooth there from Ivid Henriksen? Could be in excess of 75 metres. He does shake his head ever so slightly there. Unsure whether that was the 75 or the 70 metre mark. I think it was the 75. Thomas Mardell, the other Norwegian athlete. I'm sure the attention was on the Olympic silver medalist Ivan Henriksen. At the moment, Thomas Mardell stealing the show, 77 metres, 46. Personal best. So it's 76.03 for Ivan Henriksen. No improvement, but another good effort in round four. Thomas Mardell will complete this fourth round now. Another consistent effort from Mardell. Let's probably bang on. 75 metres. That was uh, Paul Haugen Lily Fosser applauding the crowd. I think he has completed his competition. He cleared 5 metres 72. First time foul at 5.82. This is what I've got on my system here. And then uh, it almost looked like he was saying thank you to the crowd there. So I don't know if he pushed the bar any higher or whether maybe he's just in between competitions at the moment. The win did, in the end, go to this man, Yarlan Rooker of Australia. 7 metres 84 in the sixth round. So he did get better and better. So there, Philip. Patricia of Croatia, those two doing their best efforts in the fifth and the sixth rounds. And Daniel Inge of Iceland, new personal best, 761, enough for third place. So lots of chopping and changing there in the men's long jump. His prize. I'm going to look again at that men's steeplechase results. Well timed last 200 metres from Ruiz. That's an athlete I'd love to see in something like the European Team Championships. That's coming up in a few weeks' time. The tactics employed there by Ruiz were perfect. We might see a rematch between a lot of these athletes at that European Team Championships. All the nations split up into three divisions. So uh, you get some unusual matchups there. You have some superstars from smaller nations, and then you have the big powerhouses, like your Germany's and your France's and your Great Britain. That European Team Championships is in Silesia and will be uh, streamed by European Athletics. That's between the 20th and the 25th of June. So a little bit left to go in that. Ragnar Carlsen of Sweden. He 
he was in sixth place, but he's just been nudged down into seventh. Hilmar Owen Janssen in 72-79. That's still the mark there on the board for Janssen. Carson's just exited the circle. Christos Frandesakis will throw next because he was in uh, fifth place and we did the reshuffle after three rounds. We managed a good 75-70. Pal Haugen, Lily Fosser, just running through there. I think that's at 582 and you can see he's just a little bit nervous about something going on there physically. He's given an interview to local television, which we haven't got the audio for but just seemed it just seemed like he was a bit nervous about something maybe in a foot or a lower leg so he he was choosing not to jump any higher he still gets the win 570 Vandersakis of Greece up next new season's best 75 70 in round four and that's short of 75 or maybe bang on 75 so we're into the last half an hour here in Bergen. Women's 300 metres and men's 3,000. That's our final two track races. 3,000 flat, of course, because we've already had the steeplechase. Follow through the conclusion of that men's hammer. This is Elsebeth Sletum of Norway, 19-time national champion. She actually holds the best, national best, not called national records, the national best for 300 for Norway. This is Naomi Vandenbroek of Belgium, multiple global finalist with the 4x4 squad for her nation. Teresa Petzelakova of the Czech Republic, sixth at the European Indoor Championships in Istanbul. Andrea Ruth of Norway comes up next. European under-20, 400 hurdles champion. Tessie Ertzgaard of Norway goes in lane four. She's fourth at the Nordic Senior Championships recently. Tanietta Jaeger of Norway, she gets lane three. She's just 19 years old, former heptathlete. And this is Julia Henriksen, semi-finalist over 60 metres of the European Indoor Championships. And she's from Sweden. And the only athletes to have run 300 metres so far this season, Andrea Ruth and Teresa Petrilikova in lanes five and lane six. Petrilikova with that individual final spot at the European Indoor Championships in Istanbul. Might be one to watch in lane six. A strong start there from Vanderbroek of Norway. Apologies, Van der Broek is from Belgium. Here comes Petrila Kova of the Czech Republic. She's striding round the top bend here, but has she paced it right? Got that burst of speed from Ertzgaard of Norway. My apologies, it's Henriksen of Sweden on the inside. No, it's not. Correct myself for a third time. It's Jaeger of Norway. Henrietta Jaeger of Norway striding away. I did want to say more about Jaeger. I didn't quite have time on the start line. She's 19 years old. She was fourth at the World Junior Championships in Cali. She made the semi-final in Istanbul, but that is really some run from the young Norwegian. Delighted over the line. Could she have troubled that national best performance of Sletten? I think she could have. Jaeger, she was a multi-eventer. Just carving her way into a 400 meter specialist. So she is the athlete in lane two. She got a good start, and as the stagger began to unwind, she was miles ahead of the athletes outside of her. 
Here it comes, Henrietta Jaeger of Norway. Second place for Petrila Kova of the Czech Republic. But this young woman is getting better and better over 400. She already has the national under 20 record at 52-23. That's come up in my system as 36.62. So that will be a massive new national record by 0.6 of a second. Yeah, you get still 19. Could we see her at the European under 20 or under 23 championships this summer? Maybe just all the way to Budapest. It's Thomas Mardell with the final throw of the fifth round. Short of 75 metres, that won't improve on his lead, 77.46. Gizzi Kashafali of Norway being presented to the crowd. He won the para men's 100 metres in 10.48. Rounded down ever so slightly, just four hundredths outside of his lifetime best. Under Afmani of Algeria was second, Ricard Dragton third of Norway third, and Michael Darius of Poland was fourth. Jomar Orn Jonsson of Iceland with his final effort, 72-79 in the fifth round after four fouls. And that is just inside the sector. And it's only a little bit over the 70 metre mark. So it could be about the same as the 72, 79. the uh, personal best, I think, for Daniel Inji of Iceland. 761, adding four centimetres to his new personal best. He'd already set this season. Ragnar Carlson, seventh place at the moment, 71.20. And he's hit the netting there. Ragnar Carlsen won't improve. Final track race of the evening is the men's 3,000 metres. Not a championship distance, but very, in, well, not a championship distance outdoors. A very entertaining one nonetheless. It's available to uh, youth athletes at an under 18 level. I think maybe under 20 as well you can run a 3,000. Right, once you enter the senior ranks, and it's just left to the indoors. Now, on a European level, it's usually dominated by Jakob Ingebrigtsen. And look towards those championships. European lead, very good. 7.37 by Andreas Algern. 
of Sweden. Ignored us on the outside. Isaac Camelli there in the middle, very good. 5,000, 10,000. This is the shorter end of his spectrum here. Callum Davis, surprise winner at the Australian National Championships over 15 and 5K. He's not got the fastest times, the Australian, but he's is. got that proven championship record. Oh, uh, Daniel Cabet as well. Towards the outside, I think he's the athlete in the yellow vest and bright yellow shoes. He was fourth at the World Junior Cross Country Championships in Bathurst in Australia. And seventh in Cali over this distance at the World Junior Championships. Evans Kip Trumbert will pace for 740 pace, so that's very nice. No messing around here. Perhaps that is actually the pacemaker, Kip Trumbert, in the red vest. He's got himself to the lead very well. Callum Davis, pace made in Doha. That was a very first th past 3,000 metres out there. Here yeah, racing tonight, I believe. I don't think he's been uh, given pacemaking duties, even though he's slotted into second place. Be Patrick Sandvik of Norway getting interviewed on the side, I guess. And personal best of uh, 8.27. So, quick through the first 400 metres for the 3,000 metre race going on on the left hand side of the screen 61 62. 64 gives you 8 minute pace. We're a long way under that. isn't the only endurance action going on in the European Athletics streams tonight. We have got the European 10K Cup from Passé, France, taking place at the moment. Imani Burhan Kripper, one of the headline acts there for the men's race. I wonder how he's getting on. I won't take a look. I'll probably get distracted. We've got a one-day meeting from Hordsout coming tomorrow. If you want some more action for your Sunday. We'll be in Finland and Copenhagen on Wednesday afternoon evening. And so we're hoping to stream at least 18 of these World Athletic Silver and Bronze One Day events on the YouTube, on the European Athletics YouTube channels, sometimes on European Athletics Facebook. And we are gathering events as the season goes on. European Athletics working really hard just to try and raise the profile of these events. So many meeting organisers around Europe work very hard. They assemble some brilliant fields. And uh, we hope our aim is by televising these, it makes them more accessible to the whole community and then we can support these events and help them grow. And most importantly, you guys, the Athletics fans, can see all the action through the first kilometre really well there. Callum Davis just looks eager for this pace to go faster and faster. I said he's not necessarily got the times to his name yet. Just the accolades, just that double win at the Australian National Championships. The 1500 and the 5K. And Davis has come over to the UK, basing himself in Teddington for the summer, as do so many of the Australians taking advantage of uh, St Mary's University and the training environment down there. It's a long time, long term base for the Australian endurance squad when they come over after their domestic season. And Davis just starting to lose ground on Evans Kipchumba. We've got a commitment on paper for how far Evans Kip Trumba will go.
Michael Haugen Lillifutter taking his winner's check and apologising for the black tack that he's got on his hands. It's a, you know, the modern day chalk, if you like, that the pole vaulters use so they can make sure they get their grip on the pole. Five seventy-two for Lily Fosset in the end. Like I say, I'm sure he would have carried on if he hadn't just looked a little bit uncomfortable in the latter stages. Dirk Ingebrigtsen, I'm sure imparting uh, some knowledge here. So the young athlete we saw getting interviewed at the start of this race is actually the athlete I think in fourth place at the moment. Apologies. I'll try and pick out his name if I get a look at the bid numbers. There's a few talented young Norwegians in this field. I don't necessarily want to commit to which one that is. Let's see if we can get a look at his vest. We can't this time round. Magnus Tuv Tuvmeyer. Uh, seventh of the European Championships in 10,000 metres. He's the athlete moving into second place now. Made the European Indoor Championships final. A number of these athletes competed in a 5K on the 18th of May. Maya was one of those, a new personal best, 13.19, and he's just overtaking Dan Kabet here of Kenya. So we have lost the pacemaker. Let's see if these men can work together to keep this pace moving. That'll be two laps to go, just 800 metres. Magnus Tuvmeyer. He is a 10,000 metre specialist. Oh no, he's not got ferocious speed. And he's got to pile the pressure on now. And they're all gathering behind. They'll sense the danger here. Isaac Camelli still involved. He's just in fifth place. Adam Fogg of Great Britain. Doing well as well. He's 7.44 indoor athlete. Fogg there on the outside. Actually won the Emsley Car Mile. At uh, Manchester at the BMC event there. That took place last weekend. So he's got speed in his legs, but he's going early. Dan Kibet back in the mix. The junior, fourth place at the World Championships. In a bright orange vest just tucked on the inside. So they're all gathering for a sprint. It's 500 metres to go. Maya looks like he might not be able to lift and find another gear. And there is uh, Gilias Nordas. Yeah, come around the outside as they take the belt. Gillian Nordas of Norway, 7.41 on his day outdoors. Has he managed to get himself to the front? It was still Adam Fogg. There goes Narve Gillian Nordas of Norway. He's struck for home. He's gone for it. 300 metres to go. That change of pace is phenomenal. But can he maintain it? Has he got another gear? Gillian Nordas has gone from a long, long way out, but they're starting to gather. They're going to come back at him in the home straight. Ideal conditions here in Bergen. There's no wind. You might as well strike down the back straight. Try and get a jump on the rest of the field. Now, Gillian Nordas working really hard. He looks like he's got more in the tank. He doesn't look like he's faltering. Has a quick look over his shoulder. I hope someone got the clock on this young man's last 300 metres because that was a super duper change of pace. Nave Gullia Nordas of Norway breaks the tape 7.43. That's only a whisker outside of his personal best. He did win a personal best in Ordegem last weekend, 3.34. So perhaps that speed, not a surprise. And there is uh, Gert Ingebrigtsen, straight in uh, for the handshake. Fifth at the European Indoor Championships in 2021. And I think uh, this 2023 season for Gillian Nordas is looking very good. Wasn't perhaps the progress he might have hoped for last year, but starting with that 3.34 and a very good win here in 7.43. of my had a go at winding that pace up but he just couldn't do enough to deal with the likes of Adam Fogg he's got a good change of pace on him but Nave Nadasa here striding away in the closing stages to take an easy victory here in front of a home crowd I think that 
that makes our third Norwegian winner of the day. We started off with Tobias Gronstad in the men's 800 meters. We just had Gillian Nordas in the men's 300, 3,000 meters. But between that, there was this young woman, Henrietta Jaeger. She still looks absolutely delighted. Now she should. The time of 36.62 was not only a new personal best for the young Norwegian, it was the best mark ever seen from a Norwegian woman. So it can't quite say national record. We call them national bests in these non unorthodox distance over 300 metres. But Henrietta Jaeger, nonetheless, the fastest Norwegian woman ever over 300 metres. 36.62. Filakova and a new personal best 37.24 and Van der Brock 37.73 for third. Now Begulia Nordas confirmed there 7.43.94 and Neil Danielson is the athlete just behind him. Well judged finish as well, but just a look back at the men's hammer. This event has concluded. <laughs> Ivan Henriksen, a decent showing, new season's best, seventy six meters nine centimeters. But this man, Thomas Mardell, through. His hammer all the way out to 77.46 for his best effort. That came in round three and gave him the win. He's the fourth Norwegian victor here in Bergen at this World Athletics Continental Tour silver event. We started and ended with a Norwegian win. That's a confirmed result for the men's 3,000 metres. Nave Kulia Nordas with the win. Emil Danielson up next. Adam Fogg in third. And Awed Kibrab of Norway in fourth. The youngster Dan Kibet. Good showing in fifth. So that concludes a fantastic evening of action here in Bergen for the Trondmoen Games. It has been a World Athletics Continental Tour silver event and you can see why. We've had some fantastic athletes on show. World champion Brooke Anderson in the women's hammer throw delivered with a win. And some popular local victories. A national record for Henrietta Jaeger, Thomas Mardell there concluding the action. We also had good performances from Nikki Hiltz taking the 1500 metres 407. Rachel Pelland with a brilliant sprint finish in the women's 800. But we do hope you've enjoyed the action here on the European Athletics YouTube channel. If the uh, European 10K Cup is still going on in uh, Passé, France, you might want to nip straight over and see how that action's going. If not, think about joining us tomorrow for the one-day meeting from Hordsout or Wednesday when we'll be heading to Finland and Copenhagen. We very much hope you've enjoyed the coverage tonight. I've been Hannah England and I hope to see you at a later point in the season.